Alex Coons here, Hot Tongue Pizza. Got a real special one. I'm no scientist, but I know a thing or two about dough. Anyways, we got four ingredients, the essentials, yeast, salt, water, flour. Make sure your water is about 50 degrees. Your desired dough temperature is gonna be about 78, and we are going to be mixing quite a bit in this mixer. So let's get started. We're always gonna start with our water. Flour. Now I'm gonna mix this for five minutes. Just the water and the flour. All right, it's been five minutes. The dough is gonna look very wet as it should. It's an 80% hydration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it like a, just a real quick auto lease. We're gonna let this sit here uh, for about 20, 25 minutes and uh, before we add the salt and the yeast and give it its final mix. It's been 25 minutes. We're gonna add our salt. Add the yeast. And then we're gonna mix this on speed two for seven minutes. All right, we'd be slapping. I'm gonna check my dough temperature. 75 degrees, okay? That's good. Uh, the thing about dough recipes is it is gonna be a different temperature everywhere. So that's something I'm not gonna get into. And I'll give you the measurements and the time, but those things always have to be adjusted based on whatever temperature your kitchen is, um, your flour, your water, all that stuff. So definitely something to consider. So dough's gonna be wet, so I put a little water on my hands. I'm gonna put this into a third pan, lightly oiled. I'm just gonna pick it up, put it in there. Now the fun part is just beginning. We're gonna do four bench folds while it bulk ferments. Depending on how hot it is in your kitchen, you might wanna put it into the fridge right now. The dough's sitting at 75 degrees, it's pretty cold back here. I'm gonna leave it out for the duration of the bench folds. So. I'm putting the timers on, 20, 40, 60, and 100. In 20 minutes, we're gonna be back. We'll do our first bench fold. I like to do the bench folds inside this container. It's uh, less messy, but if you, if you like or it's easier, you can bring it to a table and put it back in your container. So this is how I'm gonna do it. When I bench fold, I try to bring it up as high as I can, fold it into itself, Go again from each side. Okay, and you know what? For fun, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, a couple bench folds outside of on the actual bench. This also is easier to do on the bench. Fold it into each other, get that elasticity. Okay. I'm gonna get wild. That was the last bench fold. After that, this thing has bulk fermented to the best degree. You can feel it strengthen. Still very wet, still harder to use than most doughs. But what we can do is with this recipe, I had to make it this size. Anything uh, smaller wouldn't work in this dough mixer. If you're using a KitchenAid, you can half this recipe, but this is gonna make three dough balls that I'm about to uh, roll out right now. So I use Lloyd pans, 14 inches, um, and Instead of olive oil, I use organic veggie shortening. You can use Crisco if you'd like. You can use olive oil. It's up to you. I would recommend these pans. They're great. So the minimal amount of this stuff, I'm just gonna get around the sides. You don't wanna do too much. Really, this is just to help push it out. But I do enjoy the flavor that it gives the bottom of the crust. Nice and crispy. And like I said, the snapback is minimal when you're pushing these out. All right, 
right, I got those three lubed up, ready to go. You can use the table, kind of pull these into a dough ball. Now you can cover them with saran wrap, or if you have the lids, which are very nice and I recommend for these pans. All right, we're gonna let those sit for two hours before we dimple them out. See you in two. All right, we're back. We let the ball sit, let the ball roll. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just joking. The ball sat in the Detroit pan uh, for about an hour and a half, two hours. Again, depending on how hot your kitchen is. So look at that. We've definitely doubled in size, if you know what I'm saying. All right, so this might be the hardest part in the process is basically just, you know, pushing this thing out. So I'm gonna oil, oil up my hands. Good for the skin. Okay, I'm just gonna pull one side over here. Pull this side over here, and then I'm gonna start over here because it was a little thicker. Oh yeah, it's sticky. All right, add a little bit of oil. Pushing out pretty easy, evenly to the edge. Okay, we're getting bubbles. All right, just trying to get an even disbursement through the through the pan all right so we're gonna cap this we're gonna let it proof again for another hour hour and a half at room depending on how hot it is after that we're throwing it in the fridge for 24 hours before we bake that thing up let it bubble bubbles up bubbles away here comes the bubbles air jordan you know what i'm saying that's what it's about this was about an hour, 45 minutes. Boom, this is what we're looking for. The dough caught up to the bubbles. It's basically almost doubled in size once again. It's nice and locked. And what you're looking for is just an evenly dispersed dough. It's not going this way. It's not flat in the middle. We got this even keel, baby. We're gonna let this puppy sleep for 24, if you know what I'm saying. Watch and see, we got magic coming to you in 24. It's been 24 hours and I'm still wearing the same thing. This is what this bad boy should look like after it has been out for about an hour and a half. Depending again, it is all about temperature. So if it doesn't look like this, maybe let it sit on top of your oven or let it sit out a little longer. But this is only, I pulled this out of the fridge. It's been about an hour and a half, two hours, okay? So we're gonna cook this thing. I'm gonna cook at 520 uh, for about seven minutes. And this, we're gonna par bake this thing uh before we top it up and make a fire ass detroit all right let's go voila put it on a, a rack let it cool down it smells so good if you're interested in stealing this recipe like I did for Hot Tongue, you can click the link in the bottom, steal this recipe. Kind of has my ethos on reworking, remixing, taking what you can and making it your own. Check out How to Steal a Recipe. Thanks for watching. Later. Right